this episode, we're gonna talk about a cool little uh, solution for a common problem. You have a little form field, and when you change something like a select box, um, you want it to auto submit and save to the server. So well, let's take a look at how to do that. I'm gonna create a simple scaffold here with a ticket model for like a support ticket, and we would have a title for that. And importantly, we would have like a user ID, which is an integer pointing to the user um, who the ticket is assigned to. So with this model, um, we're gonna end up with a form where the user uh, can go to slash tickets. We might get a ticket submitted from a customer that says, can you help me with something? And the ticket gets created, but there is no user assigned to it. And we wanna create a little form, a little select box, so we can choose from the available users and automatically assign that to the user. So let's take a look at how we might do that. So let's go into our ticket model. We'll go into ticket show.html.rb, and here where the user ID is printed out, we wanna change this to um, actually be a select box. So let's go into our ticket.rb, and let's say belongs to user, optional is true, because we just did the user ID, we don't have the belongs to, you could definitely do a belongs to or uh, references migration and uh, just make sure that it's optional so you can have nil as an option as well. Um, and we wanna change this from being this little ticket uh, user ID to a little form. So here we'll say form with, <clears throat> and we'll say at ticket model, at ticket, do form, and we'll render out a little form, and we'll say form dot select, or we can say collection select. Uh, user is the attribute we want to set, um, or user ID, and we're going to take user dot all. Uh, you would filter this to the accounts users or whatever, and we want the ID and their name, or we could just do like an email address or something like that. But let's take a look and see if this is working correctly. So now it shows all of our users in the select box, which is good. Um, one of the things we're gonna need is a include blank or prompt. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe we'll say include blank and we'll say None for that, so by default, when there is no user assigned to this ticket, it will be none. So then the next step is that normally we would have to have a form.submit here in order to save that. So we would have an update ticket button, choose Chris Oliver, update ticket. Now I am selected automatically when the page loads. We can choose Bob and it will update the ticket. And if we refresh the page, Bob is still selected, which is great. But I don't wanna have to click this update ticket button. It's kind of annoying to have to do that. I would really like it to happen automatically on change of this um, select box. Well, conveniently, there is an HTML attribute you can use exactly for this. You can say on change and add an on change attribute to your select uh, HTML element on the page, and you can say this dot form, which will reference the select boxes parent form. That is a JavaScript snippet here. We don't have to add a stimulus controller. We don't have to add any um, listeners or anything like that. We can actually execute the JavaScript directly here in this attribute. So in order to submit the form, we say request submit, which will basically tell Turbo, in order to uh, process this, it will request the submit, take over everything like it normally would, and it can submit this request to the server. So here we go. If we change this, let's get rid of our sub submit button while we're at it. If we change this now to Chris Oliver, it will save automatically and we'll get that ticket as updated message at the top. So that's awesome. Um, and if we look at our server logs, we will see that whenever we click that button, it started a patch request. It used the TurboStream format, so Turbo is taking care of that, and everything is good. 
Now we can do um, additional things with a turbo stream response here. We just have the regular redirect, but we could have the turbo stream response um, add like a little checkbox here temporarily or something just to denote that it was saved. We don't need that message, uh, that big old message across the top. Maybe we would want a little toast uh, that would pop up on the side or something that wasn't as prominent, but we wouldn't have to do a full redirect whenever this saves. But for the simplicity of it, we wrote a uh, couple words of JavaScript, this form request submit, and that's it, and we are done. Um, so that is a great start to this, which I think is awesome. So before we go, let's take this one step further and build a custom uh, turbo stream action to pull this off and make that little saved thing next to this box. So let's dig in. Uh, tickets controller is going to need to respond to the format.turboStream. And rather than just uh, rendering the TurboStream stuff out here, let's go ahead and make a file for that. So we'll go under the tickets views and add update.turbostream.erb. And inside of here, we want to do two things. First, we want to say um, TurboStream after, and we want to say that ticket user ID field. Um, so that's going to be an auto-generated ID on the select box here. So if we look at this, you'll see the ID is specified as ticket user ID right here. And we'll just use that and say, hey, after that element, let's go ahead and append another one. Um, so what we wanna do is we want to say, uh, a span tag or something, um, any kind of tag that you might want in here, we'll say saved or updated or whatever you would want to call it. Uh, we'll add that span afterwards and then we need to do something custom. We need to remove this after a two seconds, three seconds, one second, whatever time we want. Um, because typically you don't want to permanently show it just in case they change it again, you want to show the saved uh, message again and show that it actually changed. Um, so here, what we're going to do is say uh, turbo stream action tag, and we don't have a shortcut for this because we're going to make it. We're going to say remove later, and we're going to give it a target of that saved element up above. So that ID, uh, we can do a string for this. We can do a symbol, whatever. It doesn't really matter because it'll always be converted to a string. And then we want to say after and some number of milliseconds, which we'll use in our JavaScript to set a timeout for that number of milliseconds before we remove that element on the page. So that is going to give us a custom turbo stream action, which we can define inside of our JavaScript. So to do that, we're going to import the stream actions from hotwired turbo and then stream actions dot remove later is going to be a function. Uh, we'll say function like so. And this is going to basically set timeout for a, another function that's going to get called and the amount of time we're going to get is this dot get attribute uh, after um, we could say, you know, milliseconds time, whatever we want to name that attribute. We called it after. And then we are inside the turbo stream element here. That is what this represents, the turbo stream element on the page that just got inserted. And we'll say this dot target elements uh, for each, for each one of those elements, we want to element dot remove. And there we go. So if this works, when we change to Chris Oliver, we should see saved gets added. And then two seconds later, it should disappear. Now, if we made any mistakes, we'll see, um, you know, that can be listed here. We see get attribute is not a function. Um, that is probably because I should have done function here without the fat arrow. So we'll recompile our JavaScript change this to blah, 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 and there we go. So we can change it to none, saved, two seconds later, and we're good. So we are able to build our own custom TurboStream actions to do cool stuff like this, 
and actually make a really nice user experience um, with just a couple lines of code. It's pretty amazing and impressive on what you can do with this stuff. So not only did we do an auto-submitting form, we also took that form and added the update status to it in basically three lines of code or three or four lines of code. So that's it for this episode. If you're interested in more Hotwire stuff like this, like custom turbo stream actions, let us know in the comments below and we will cover that stuff in a future episode. So that's it for this episode. I'll talk to you then. Peace.